Elon Musk University teaches SpaceX, Starlink, and Tesla prodigies. What the heck does that mean? Let's go find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Dark Temptation. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about a brand new university that Elon Musk is starting. A school of higher learning. Now I read about 10 or more articles about this last night. I thought it was fascinating and I wanted to bring this to your attention. So it is going to be a STEM based school or a STEM styled school. Basically STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's what they concentrate on. So you're not going to find your humanities, your psychology, your sociology, your philosophy, your PE, your arts. <laughs> you're not going to find any of that, right? It is very science, let's say, driven. Once again, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. What I did find also interesting with this STEM learning is that it is more of a hands-on approach, a collaborative approach, a means of getting students to generate solutions based on a specific criteria or constraint. And I think this is exactly what Elon Musk does in his everyday life, right? That's exactly what happens. So it is not learning something just to learn it, just to memorize something. It is the difference, in my personal opinion, of innovation to iteration. These type of people will innovate, create new, create something from nothing. Whereas the people that come out of today's schools basically iterate off what is already there. That's just my way of looking at it. I don't know how you look at it, but that's the way I look at it. Now, like I said, I read like 10 plus articles on this. Some good, some bad. One of them was from The Guardian. And I have to bring it up because I swear to God, that rag, I just don't know. I read it because I just like to hear every side of every story. But man, that thing is just horrifically biased just horrifically biased. I mean, it's basically propaganda. I mean, just what the hell are they doing over there? Get it together. I mean, I personally like a middle ground to everything and then you be the judge, right? That's what this channel is all about. I'll give you both sides. That's why I read so much on the same damn topic. I read stuff from overseas. I read stuff from the US. I read it from all over the place because I want every side of everything. And then I make up my mind and I give you my commentary and then allow you to be the judge. What do you think? But man, some of these rags do not do that. They just want to push a specific ideology. My God. Anyways, I digress. I'm going to read an article or a piece of an article from The Verge because they were kind of in the middle, which was kind of nice <laughs> compared to some of these companies. Anyways, I'm going to read a portion of The Verge. But before we get into that, I want to say that if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button. You can click there. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you want more Starlink or SpaceX type of content, I put together a playlist of over 200 videos over here that I've been putting together for the last 25 months. Man, it's a long time, huh? <laughs> Take a look at that when you're done watching this video. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is Christina. You'll get 15 additional percent off, additional percent off just by using that promo code, or you can just go to jcristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash VPN. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Pick them up, once again, free. So let's get into this article and then I'll give you my commentary. And most importantly, I wanna hear from you. What do you think? Down in the comments, I want to hear from you. So. 
Once again, this is from The Verge. It says, Elon Musk is planning to open up a university in Austin, Texas, according to a report from Bloomberg. A tax filing from Musk charity, The Foundation, reveals that the billionaire wants to contribute $100 million to build a STEM-focused primary and secondary school before opening the university. Quote, the school is intended to ultimately expand its operations to create a university dedicated to education at the highest levels. The school is being designed to meet the educational needs of those with proven academic and scientific potential who will thrive in a rigorous project-based curriculum. Like I said, it is based on that STEM style of education, a collaborative type of style. It is very thoughtful in nature. It is very hands-on in nature in comparison to the study that we get in our universities where are very conceptual in nature. And when you get out of school, you don't know nothing. You know concept, but you can do nothing. <laughs> Anyways, that's for another video. The article continues. I did digress. <laughs> The foundation filed the tax-exempt application with the Internal Revenue Service, or the IRS, in October of 2022. And Bloomberg says it was approved in March of this year. As noted in the filing, the university will offer instruction by experienced faculty in the subjects of math, science, engineering, and physics. In addition to hands-on learning experience, including simulations, case studies, fabrication design projects, and labs. I'm sure a lot, a lot, a lot of labs. The school will also seek accreditation by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges. The application also offers some details on the planned K-12 schools as well, which will focus on teaching STEM subjects and other topics. Initial enrollment is expected to start at around 50 students. Quote, with the goal of scaling its enrollment over time, Musk may also open a school focused on the Montessori style of education as part of his plans to build a town in Texas, according to a report of the Wall Street Journal. Now, a Montessori style of education is an education approach developed by Dr. Maria Montessori, an Italian physician and educator in the early 20th century. This approach is characterized by an emphasis on child led learning, self-directed activity, and hands-on experimental learning. So basically what this is, is a holistic or a child-centered or centric type of learning where the teacher is a guide and not a guru. Who would have thunk such a thing? <laughs> Interesting, right? It continues. This isn't the first time that Must has dabbled into education. In 2014, Must opened an institute called the Ad Astra for his five children and a small number of other students. However, Musk and the school's co-founder closed Ad Astra and opened Astra Nova in 2020, an online-only school that had around 50 full-time students as of last year. So I think that this is very interesting that Elon Musk is building this university and possibly other schools that are based on this Montessori or this STEM-based type of style learning. And I think that this is needed. And the reason I say that is because I have two children that went through college and I can tell you that the college education today is not the best. Obviously, I went to college also, but listen, Today's college is a little bit different than when I went to college. Today's college is very, it espouses on this single ideology, whereas it is almost propaganda in nature. They only point the student one way instead of in multiple ways and then allow the student to be the judge and decide for themselves. That's not what they do. They really push a certain ideology. And if your student or your child or you are not of that ideology, bad. That's the plain truth. So having something like this is definitely interesting. Now, is this going to be for everyone? No. I spoke about this in schooling and schooling methods on Friday with my wife when we did the JC Live show. We called it Free Speech Friday that we do. It's like 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We try to do it every week. If you haven't been there, Go take a look, all right? It's fun. Join us. We have a good time with it. But 
This type of learning is once again completely different to what he is proposing here. It is also different than the learning that we see in Europe, all right? It's a little bit different now than the past, but in the past, Europe was very, let's say, university-based, whereas if you knew what you wanted to be, you wanted to be a dentist, you wanted to be a lawyer, you wanted to be an ophthalmologist, whatever, you're going to go to university, right? But in Europe, if you don't want to do that and you want to do something like fashion design or you want to be a shoemaker, you want to be an artist, a dancer, some type of automotive technician, you're not going to go to university. You're going to go to a trade school that's going to teach you exactly what you need for that job. That's why, for example, if you go to Germany and you have a BMW mechanic work on your car, that mechanic is going to be the most master of master technicians that you get here in the US. Because that's all they did when he came out of, or she came out of school, regular school, right? Primary school, they went straight into a technical school where they learned automotive and then they specialized on BMWs. And that guy damn knows BMWs inside and out. You see what I'm saying? Here, it's completely different. You're learning concept or theory. <laughs> you don't end up actually learning how to do anything. You learn the concept, you learn the theory behind it, but you don't do. You know, I went to three schools. I went to academic college and I also went to artistic college, right? Like a trade. I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale for commercial art, advertising, design, film production, right? All of it. And then I went to university for child psychology and then another university for computer science, programming and whatnot, because I don't know what I wanted to be when I grew up and I still don't know what I want to be at 50. <laughs> Either which way, I went to both sides of it, all right? And there's definitely a difference between the two sides, but... What I do know is the technical school actually had professors or teachers that did what they teach. If it was someone that was teaching me AutoCAD, most likely that person was working still in AutoCAD, doing some type of rendering or design engineering work, right? And he or she is teaching me based on their real world knowledge, not concept, not theory. Whereas in my university training, a lot of the teachers really didn't do that subject. They didn't work in that subject. The whole idea of, I will teach if I don't know how to do. And that's exactly the way it was in university. Now, I don't know how it was for you, but that's how it was for me. So seeing this, where it's very honed in on that STEM base, where it's specific, and then also that Montessori type base where you are now learning and actually learning not just concepts, but by doing in a collaborative method, I think it's fantastic. Now, of course, it's not for everyone. Like I said, you're not going to get your PE and your psychology and your philosophy and your humanities, your psychology, your sociology, so on and so forth. You're not going to get any of that. So is it good? Is it bad? I think it's a little bit of both, right? I think if you're one of those people that want to go down a science and technology, engineering, mathematical type of thing, I think that it is very, very good. I personally think, and I don't know what you think, I think that this university is a very well thought out incubator. Why do I say that? I think it is a great way to bring in brilliant minds to SpaceX, to Tesla, to Neuralink, to any of Musk's companies. Because I could imagine it'd be very hard for him to find unique, brilliant minds that wish to innovate and not iterate. I think that it would be very hard for him to find. And by having a university like this means that he can bring these minds in. He doesn't really have to charge them. He could. He can put in a very large monetary sum that could be set up as, let's call them grants or whatever, so that the very brilliant minds could come in and learn in this incubator and they don't even have to pay for it. And then he can just kind of pick and choose out of this incubator of 50, 100, plus people for his companies and not have to try to find people from all over the world. I view this as like the Xavier 
Institute of Higher Learning from the X-Men, where Xavier was that main guy that created this school of gifted youngsters to hone their specific qualities, their mutations, let's say, and to use them for good. And I think that this is similar to that. I can see Elon Musk as being Xavier, putting this school together and bringing in all of these great minds into one place and then using that STEM type style or Montessori type style of learning to actually get them to become the best that they can be based on whatever that subject is. Now, there's one other thing here, the elephant in the room, so to speak, and that is nonprofit, tax exempt. Remember, this school would be a nonprofit, tax exempt type of business. Brilliant. A good place to park some money, right? Remember, guys, the rich get richer, the poor get poor. Now, does that mean that the rich are doing something crooked to get rich? Sometimes. But a lot of it has to do with the rich having the money, the resources, the funding to hire the most brilliant minds in tax law, to find all of the loopholes so that their clients don't have to pay as much taxes or no taxes at all. Whereas us, the poor, the middle class, pay the most because we're stupid and we use TurboTax and we use H&R Block. <laughs> because that is what our funding allows us to do, our resources. That's just the way it is. So once again, we pay the most. Anyways, guys, I want to know your thoughts on this. What do you think? Do you think it's pretty cool that he's putting together this university? Do you not? Do you think that it is going to be a bad thing? Do you think that it is a good thing? Do you think that I'm right that this could be an incubator? Do you believe that he might be like Xavier? <sighs> Bringing on the most brilliant minds out there, teaching them properly, not like the way our current universities are teaching our students. Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, as I said, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the very many years and the merch and, of course, my teas. If you like any of them, please pick them up and support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.